Minister Benjamin Netanyahu causes the second war of independence. Trey Yanks on the ground in southern Israel with the latest from there. Trey? Yeah, Eric, good afternoon. You'll be able to hear behind me the Israeli airstrikes that are targeting the eastern side of the Gaza Strip. It appears that the Israelis are trying to hit a tunnel system beneath Gaza. They've been hitting one specific location over and over and over again. This as they're using artillery units on the ground and also tank fire to try and soften the target. You mentioned just yesterday, we know Israeli forces entered Gaza. They are still operating there tonight in the northern part, trying to destroy as many Hamas and Islamic Jihad positions. Now, despite this operation, we know that Hamas has maintained their ability to fire rockets. Just a few minutes ago, they were able to target the southern city of Ashkelon. Earlier today, the city of Ashdod took a direct impact. And tonight, as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was speaking alongside his defense minister, Yoav Gallant, he spoke about what Israel is facing in the preparations for the country. Netanyahu saying, quote, it's our second war of independence, adding, we will win. Again, he was also joined by the defense minister, Yoav Gallant, a man that we spoke with face to face yesterday to understand exactly the objective of the Israelis. They say this is now the second phase of the operation. The increased airstrikes and ground activity. Once again, they are warning civilians inside Gaza to head south. Eric. Yeah, Trey, you talk about the tunnel system, of course, uh, perhaps hundreds of miles of tunnels deep underground. That the concern. Hamas officials say has stockpiled tons of medicine, fuel, uh, food. Uh, to if you look behind me, Eric, right. you're going to see some massive. Air. Eric, I want to interrupt you here so you can listen here. You can hear those strikes and likely see some flashes behind me. This is significant and it just illustrates the ground is, is shaking here along the border as the Israelis hammer these positions on the eastern side of Gaza. They're not just softening the target, they are reducing it to rubble. This has been the situation. You could hear those strikes against the eastern side of Gaza. And as you mentioned, it's the tunnel system the Israelis are worried about. They are concerned that as this war continues and they have forces on the ground, that those forces will be ambushed. They will face a severe disadvantage when they're operating inside Gaza. And so they want to ensure that they can get rid of any of those tunnels ahead of time before this larger ground incursion moves forward. Eric. Trey, uh, we're looking at the video right now and we hear the artillery and then you, d you see the flash. Do they have specific information that you know of about that tunnel? Because as I was saying, it's, it's Hamas have stockpiled medicine, food, and everything that the, the, the people of Gaza need, but this terrorist organization has kept it for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. We have been following reports out of Gaza that indicate Hamas is not only holding fuel, but also food in the tunnels beneath the Strip. And so it's part of the reason that the Israelis have launched what they are calling a complete siege against Gaza. They want to completely cut off the organization, force the fighters and militants to come out of the tunnels and then engage the Israelis face to face. But I think the timing of all of this is significant because when we step back and we look at what is unfolding, this is not days or weeks. Yesterday, Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, telling us it would be months. And that was echoed tonight during that press conference and statement where you saw the entire war cabinet speaking about the months ahead trying to deliver a message to the Israeli people and to the world that they will not hold back their strikes, they will not hold back their efforts to totally demilitarize the Gaza Strip. And they have one specific goal in mind, and that goal is to completely destroy Hamas, to completely demilitarize Gaza so that the border communities and the entire state of Israel can remain safe against future attacks. Publicly, uh, yeah, publicly, officials uh, in the Middle East have criticized Israel for this, but is there a private sense that, it, that it's time to be over for Hamas? They are protected and fed and supported by not just Iran, but also by Qatar, and Qatar has indicated that after this is over, they will reassess its relationship to the uh, vile terrorist group. Is there a sense that we're at a turning point now? for a new change in the Middle East once this is over, even though it may take several months and who knows how much more bloodshed. Yeah, absolutely, Eric. October 7th, the massacre that took place against so many innocent civilians here in southern Israel changed not just Israel, but the entire Middle East forever. This country is still in shock. 
it is still reeling from the brutal attack. And it's part of the reason that Netanyahu tonight, when he addressed the country and the world, said, look, there will be questions that need answers, and answers not just from the cabinet, but also from the prime minister himself, admitting that. Because there was clearly a security failure here. But when it comes to Hamas, the group in control of Gaza, the response right away from the Israelis now is to completely destroy Hamas, one of Iran's largest proxies in the region behind the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, and then also ensure that they're not able to reestablish themselves in other parts of the Middle East. Now, this is creating some tension. As for the Qataris, the Qataris right now are playing a critical role in trying to get the hostages, but we understand 230 of them free from captivity inside Gaza, and they have been the mediators in all of this able to get two American citizens and two Israeli citizens out so far. But we understand those conversations continue. And despite efforts by Hamas to try and spin the, the information we are receiving out of Gaza, and despite the strikes that continue, we, we understand talks are ongoing to try and get those hostages home. Eric? Trey Yanks, Trey reporting an uh, indication of the, of the brave and courageous frontline reporting of our reporters here at Fox News. And hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.